So before we proceed to our lesson and discussion, um, I will introduce myself first. My name is Carl Sese and I will be your instructor for this trimester for the subject IT01 or Living in the IT Era. So for this subject, uh, we have three objectives. Number one, obje first objective is to discuss the importance of ICT in our daily lives. Number two is to identify the advantages and disadvantages of ICT. And number three is discover the uses of ICT. So we will discuss the importance of how ICT help us on our daily living, how ICT change our lives. Right. So ICT or Information and Communications Technology are an extensional term for information technology that stresses the role of unified telecommunications and the integrations of telecommunications and computers. It also referred, um, it's also referred to the convergence of audio, visual, and telephone networks with computer networks through a single cabling or link system. So it is important for us to know and understand ICT because of the day our life is, we are surrounded by technology. We are surrounded by different kinds of technologies and for, to further understand it, we have to understand and we have to discuss or we have to study this topic. So the term ICT is also referred to, you, to the convergence of audio, visual, and telephone networks. So the, there are large economic incentives to merge the telephone network with the computer network system using a single unified system of cabling, signal distribution, and management. ICT is an umbrella term that includes any communication device, encompassing radio, television, cell phones, computer and network hardware, satellite systems, and so on as well as the various services and appliances with, uh, with them, such as video conferencing and distance learning. So I think it's a broad subject. It is so broad class and the concepts are evolving. So every year there are different updates or um, changes in our technology. So it covers any product that will store, retrieve, manipulate, transmit or receive information electronically in a digital form. So what are the examples of ICT class? So examples are personal computers or PC, digital television, email, or robots. So theoretically, um, the theoretical differences between interpersonal communication technologies and mass communication, mass communication technologies have been identified by the philosophers we use Motor. Skills framework for the information age is one of the many models for describing and managing competencies for ICT professionals for the 24th century. All right. So, since we already defined the meaning of ICT, let's discuss where it came from or the history of ICT. So, Sandberg Simula ang ICT. So class recently, it has become popular to broaden the term um, to explicitly include the field of electronic communication so that people tend to use the abbreviation ICT or Information and Communication Technology. So since the 1950s, we have four generations of computers have evolved. And what are those? So the four generations of computers have evolved each generation, each generation reflected a change to hardware and increased size, but increased capabilities to control computer operations. So the first generation used vacuum tubes. The second used transistors. The third used integrated circuits. And the fourth used integrated circuits on a single computer chip. So advances in artificial intelligence that will minimize the need for complex programming characterized the fifth generation of computers, still in the experimental stage. So the first commercial computer was the Univac 1. It was developed by John Eckert and John W. Mockley in 1951. It was used by the Census Bureau to predict the outcome 
of the 1952 presidential election, for the next 25 years, mainframe computers were used in large corporations to do calculations and manipulate large amounts of information stored in databases. So supercomputers were used in science and engineering for designing aircraft and, the, and nuclear reactors and for predicting worldwide weather patterns. Mini computers came on the scene in the early 1980s in small businesses, manufacturing plants, and factories. So in 1975, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology developed microcomputers. In 1976, Stanley Corporation's first radio shock microcomputer followed, and the Apple microcomputer was included in 1977. So the market for microcomputers increased dramatically when IBM introduced the first personal computer in the fall of 1981. Because of dramatic improvements in computer components and manufacturing, personal computers today do more than the largest computers. Of the mid 1960s at about a thousand of them cost. Computers today are divided into four categories by size, cost, and processing ability. They were sub, um, there are supercomputer, mainframe, mini computer, and micro computer. So more commonly known as a personal computer. So personal computer categories include desktop, network, laptop, and handheld. So currently, um, plus every day the people or people use computers in new ways. Computers are increasingly affordable. They continue to be more powerful as information processing tools, as well as easier to use. Um, we are using computers in many ways plus, to help us to make our life easier and faster, right? So first is we have the computers in business. So one of the first and largest applications of computers is keeping and managing business and financial records. Most large companies keep the employment records of all their workers in large databases that are managed by computer programs. Similar programs in databases are used in such business functions as billing customers, tracking payments, received and payments to be made, and tracking supplies needed in items produced, stored, shipped, and sold. In fact, practically all the information companies need to be or need to do business involves the use of computers and information technology. On a smaller scale, many businesses have replaced cash registers with point of sale or POS terminals. So these POS terminals not only print a sale receipt for the customer, but also send information to a computer database when each item is sold to maintain an inventory of items on hand and items to be ordered. So computers have also become very important in modern factories. Computers controlled robots now do tasks that are hot, heavy, and hazardous. Robots are also used to do routine. Repetitive tasks in which boredom or fatigue can lead to poor quality work. Next is we have the help of computer in the field of medicine. So information technology plays an important role in medicine. For example, a scanner takes a series of computers of the body by means of computerized spatial tomography or CAT or magnetic resonance imaging or MRI. A computer then combines the picture to produce detailed three-dimensional images of the body's organs. In addition, the MRI produces images that show changes in body chemistry and blood flow. Lastly, is we have the help of computers in the field of science and engineering. So using supercomputers, meteorologists predict future weather by using a combination of observations of weather conditions from many sources. A mathematical representation of the behavior of the atmosphere and geographic data. Computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing programs, often called CAD or CAM, have led to improved products in many fields. 
especially where designs tend to be very detailed. Computer programs make it possible for engineers to analyze designs of complex structures such as power plants and space stations. So in this generation, in our generation, computer or ICT is very essential for everyone in different fields actually class. So next class is we will discuss the um, ICT careers and job guides that you may consider if you want to pursue in the field of ICT or computer programming. So the first career type is we have the business analyst. So for business analyst, um, so for this type of job or ICT career, business analysts examine an organization or part of a business to determine how a better how to better achieve goals. Almost always, um, there is a strong information technology component. That's because IT is integral to modern business operations. For example, anal um, analysts uh, may scope out the potential effects of changing computer software. Analysts need to be adaptable because job requirements vary from company to company. And also to become a business analyst, you probably need to obtain a, an entry-level position in the field and build a career from there. Business education, in addition to advanced IT training, confers an advantage. So the job titles that you can um, get for this kind of IC career, for being a business analyst, we have the business analyst, business and technology analyst, business development manager, or ICT business analyst, IT continuity risk analyst and manager, or business systems, uh, maintenance, pre-sales customer technology strategies, reporting analyst, reporting and insight specialist, senior data business analyst, senior digital reporting analyst, and senior forecast analyst, senior insights analyst, or team leader in a IT business systems. So next job is we have the computer service technician. So computer service technicians also referred to as a computer repair technicians. Repair computer hardware and software. Some of the common tasks are replacing defective components, removing spyware and viruses, disassembling hardware, and running diagnostic tests. If a job in this field is your goal, um, start getting as much experience as you can in assembling and repairing computers. Um, COM TIA A plus certification is a helpful qualification and also considered completing a program as a tech school or college. Next is we have the cybersecurity specialist. So for cybersecurity specialists, um, it, they protect the security of computer systems and networks. They need broad techno um, technical knowledge since security is an important consideration across most parts of modern computer systems. An IT related degree is normally required for cybersecurity specialist jobs. Um, experience is critical for all but graduate or assistant positions and certifications may give you a strong advantage over other applicants. Cybersecurity specialists enjoy an excellent average salary, demonstrate expertise in a difficult field, can place you in a, in a commanding career position. So we next is we have the data analyst. So for data analysts, these professionals develop insight and gain information through the collection analyst and interpretation of data. So they work for business and other types of organization, identifying and helping to solve problems. As a data analyst, you'll use programming and computer software skills to complete statistical analysis of data. If you want to start a career as a data analyst, learn some programming languages and get a bachelor's degree in information technology and data analyst. Next career is we have the data scientist. So for data scientists, a data scientist is the same broad 
um, career stream as a data analyst. Perhaps the main difference is that data scientists are expected to use advanced programming skills more routinely. They don't just gain insights from data, but also do things like building complex behavioral models um, using big data. You can um, transition from being a data analyst to a data scientist. A master's degree in a data science is also a way to get into this line of work. Next, we have the database administrator. So database administrator or DBAs handle database security, integrity and performance. They ensure data standards are consistent. Data is accessible by users as needed and they solve any problems encountered by users. These professionals might also be involved in database planning and data development. A degree in an IT-related field is usually required, and it's useful to have programming experience. Experienced DBAs have strong applied knowledge of database, operating systems, and technologies. So last one is we have the hardware engineer. So hardware engineers oversee the manufacture and installation of computer systems, servers, circuit boards, and chips, as well as the testing of equipment. They also work with routers, printers, and keyboards. So people wanting a career in this lucrative field require a degree in computer engineering. Depending on the employer, a degree in electrical engineering or computer science might be an acceptable alternative. Creativity and good communication skills are useful complements to technical skills. So this is the last part of our um, discussion. I hope you understand our discussion and see you on the next chapter. Thank you. For more ICCT Colleges video updates, please subscribe and click the notification button.